Actor Philip Seymour Hoffman is being remembered by family and friends. A private funeral for the actor was held in New York on Friday. Hoffman died last Sunday from an apparent heroin overdose. The actor's death has brought renewed interest in the debate over drug use in America and the continued federal prohibition on marijuana. Here is what Tennessee Democrat Congressman Steve Cohen said at a House Oversight Committee hearing on marijuana policy. But it is ludicrous, absurd, crazy to have marijuana in the same level as heroin. Ask the late Philip Seymour Hoffman if you could. Nobody dies from marijuana. People Congressman Cohen heroin. joins us now from Washington. Congressman, thank you for being here. Those were very stark words, and it looked like they were being received with a lot of attention. We have seen legalization of recreational pot in two states, Colorado and Washington, but no movement so far on the federal level. Why is that? Well, there have been efforts, and, and, and there's a real cultural lag between what the people's interests are and what we've seen in the states where it's been enacted and Washington. Uh, that we've come close to get boats together to tell the DEA not to interfere in states that have legalized medical marijuana or legalized marijuana in general, but we haven't had a majority. The Republicans, who are supposed to be for states' rights and for individual liberties, aren't when it comes to this type of issue, and they need to kind of get straight. This is a popular issue with the people. Most people know that marijuana should be on the, the least uh, uh, of the drugs that the federal government's concerned about, and that the emphasis should be on heroin and meth crack and cocaine, uh, prescription pills, uh, the ones that cause addiction and cause people to resort to crime to feed their habit. Marijuana doesn't do that. And the idea that it's rated Schedule 1, just as heroin is, and a, a level above opium and cocaine and crack is, as I said, ludicrous and crazy. I was a fan of Philip Seymour Hoffman's. I, I really was very upset that he died. I was such a great talent, and, and he didn't need to. I mean, it just it was just... It's just so sad, and I've had a personal friend who's died of a heroin overdose. Heroin's where we should be concentrating our efforts, and it's becoming more and more prevalent in America. I, you know, I was, I was very sad by this. I think we all are, and it came as such a surprise to everyone. Um, given this and everything that you just said, where should the government's efforts be focused in terms of combating heroin use? Well, I mean, there needs to be, uh, there should be efforts in Afghanistan, and there allegedly have been, obviously unsuccessful. Uh, in reducing the poppies, which I think a large part of the heroin does come from that area. And then in America, we've got, we really need to look more at rehabilitation and treatment. Uh, putting heroin addicts in jail is not the right answer. We've got to find treatment programs and make them available, uh, methadone programs, and not have methadone centers have to deal with the politics of sometimes not in my backyard politics. And, and we just need to have a different approach. But it, much money needs to go into mental health. Uh, and here and rehabilitation on folks that do get addicted and then for those people that sell it I think we do need to to have strict measures and those people need to be dealt with in, in, in incarceration but there are a lot of people incarcerated right now for marijuana and for for sale for life sentences which is absurd whose sentences need to be commuted our prison population is greater than any country in the world it's three times greater than it was in the, in the worst of East Germany, and it costs us $30,000 a year to incarcerate people. Mm -hmm. And it does work adversely, particularly on minority populations. My district here in Memphis is African American. African Americans use drugs the same number and same percentages as, as others, but are four times more likely in some areas and seven times more likely in some areas to be arrested and convicted. And there's a, a disparate treatment that is wrong, okay. and a lot of the male population has been decimated. Congressman, I want to change topics here because you also sit on the committee that heard testimony on security breaches at stores like Target and Neiman Marcus. A Senate committee heard testimony as well. At the Senate hearing, a Target executive was asked about replacing the magnetic strips on credit cards with more secure electronic devices. Let's listen to that. We tried this in 2003. We put guest payment devices, as we call them, in our stores to read chips. We introduced a new payment card, a Target Visa card, with a chip in it, um, but without broad adoption, there isn't significant benefits for consumers. Congressman, do you think that big business is really seeing the scope of the threat to its customers and acting appropriately to protect them? Well, I don't think they have, and it's amazing that it's taken this serious breach to bring it to the public's attention and to their attention. Now, I, I, as I understand it, Target and Neiman Marcus are looking at correcting their systems. 
Uh, a chip and pen system has been used in Europe. It'll cost billions of dollars to, to, to bring that into the American system, but we need to do it. It's a cost of doing business, and the cost of not doing it is, is terrible for consumers and for businesses who should be liable. So we need this system, and, and that's the system that can protect uh, individuals. You know, there's theft, and, and that's going to be a problem, uh, a danger to our country, too, is all kind of uh, new security breaches with, with the new high technology. And with the convenience of, of technology, we also have dangers. Congressman Steve Cohen, thank you. You're welcome. Nice to be with you, Melissa. And you, thank you.